Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Here it is, at long last, the sequel that I've personally been jumping up and down in anticipation of ever since before the credits had even finished rolling for 2014's Guardians of the Galaxy, a movie that was wild, inventive, poignant, funny, and just beautiful to behold. Mwah! And here we are three years later for Volume 2. Now, the biggest asset that these movies have going for them is their deep roster of interesting and lovable characters. And you know what I'm going to tell you? Any movie that gives me the opportunity to spend two more hours in a company of Star-Lord, Rocket, Groot, Gamora, and Drax, and all the rest of the ancillary characters that surround them in this cinematic universe is going to warrant, at the least, a large bag of popcorn for me. Yeah, at least a large, no matter what the story has them doing. And that, that qualifier right there, is definitely going to come into play here in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, because this movie doesn't give the characters much from a plot perspective to, you know, do. There's no major guiding force to the narrative for the lion's share of this movie. No Infinity Stone, for example, to serve as an impetus for the plot. No, for the majority of this film, we're simply treated to an assemblage of scenes where these characters that we truly do love basically just do their thing, man. You know, crack wise, engage in shenanigans, and run afoul of some dangerous creatures, all to a rockin' soundtrack of classic tunes. We all know those beats from the very first movie, and you loved how they played out back then, and you will love them this time too. But that first movie had the element of surprise on its side as it introduced us to this world and these characters. This time, we already know the beat, even if we can't help ourselves but wanna get caught up dancing to it all over again. So what does this new movie give us exactly? Well, more of the same, only bigger. Bigger guns, more jokes, and more expansive and beautiful CG worlds. I mean, I saw this thing in IMAX 3D, and I cannot stress enough just how impressively every shot of this film fills the screen with eyeball-melting beauty. It's transporting in every conceivable way. But the most obvious example of how this movie gives you more of everything is... It, you know those characters I was talking about? Well, rather than telling another fast-paced and well-defined story like the first film, Volume 2 doubles down on what you loved most about the first one, the visual beauty, the humors, and the characters, man. Through monologues, flashbacks, and other devices, we get to know each one of them, even the ones like Nebula and Yondu, who you would consider villains a whole lot better. Not long after the opening mission sequence, which is incredibly fun and inventive, we're introduced to the, well, ostensibly the movie's primary villains, and I have to say, they're really not all that interesting. Much like the first film's petulant pouter Ronin, these immature super beings, they don't even show up themselves to battle the heroes. They just send out little remote piloted drones to fight them while they stay behind in their golden palace and fume loudly. Good thing then, that although they remain a pretty constant antagonist to the Guardians throughout this film, the best I can say without spoiling anything is that the line between ally and foe to our heroes is kind of fluid throughout the movie. Again, it all goes back to developing, strengthening, and evolving these great characters, and there are several of them who swing in unexpected directions, displaying new and interesting shades. And I haven't even gotten into how great Kurt Russell is here as Ego, Peter Quill's long-lost father, whose relationship with Star-Lord is the beating heart of this movie that is all about beating hearts. What it lacks in originality, it more than makes up for with unexpected emotional impact. Not just for Star-Lord, but for Drax, Yondu, Nebula, and just about everyone else. Just try and get through certain passages of this film without getting a little lump in your throat. It's tough. Look, the question I've been getting out there on the street is, hey, is it better than the first one? And the answer to that is, I think, uh, well, not really. But I still award Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 an extra large bag of popcorn. During large portions of the film, very little happens in the plot, except for exposition, but I didn't even care. Not when that exposition is about characters I find so fascinating. Not when the film soars so well above these objections on a wave of pure emotion, witty charm, and visual razzle-dazzle. While this film, unlike its predecessor, never quite becomes more than the sum of its parts, those parts are still so unbelievably potent that they will propel you all throughout the movie's two hour and 15 minute running time, right out of the theater, breathless at the visual and emotional journey that you've just witnessed 
earnest and desperate to take the ride again and again. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more and support us by clicking subscribe while you're there and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 in the comments as well. Let me know. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel and I am Groot!